the very last deception of Satan will be to make of none effect the testimony of the Spirit of God, because as Satan knows where there is no vision, the people perish, according to Proverbs 29, 18. Satan will work ingeniously in different ways and through different agencies to unsettle the confidence of God's remnant people in the true testimony. He will bring in spurious visions to mislead and mingle the false with the true, and so disgust people that they will regard everything that bears the name of visions as a species of fanaticism. But honest souls, by contrasting false and true, will be enabled to distinguish between them. When the testimonies which were once believed are doubted and given up, Satan knows the deceived ones will not stop at this, and he redoubles his efforts till he launches them into open rebellion, which becomes incurable and ends in destruction. And so this is why all of us in the Seventh-day Remnant Church see some in the Seventh-day Adventist Church coming against us with so much anger. We present the truth in its original form, and because they have been indoctrinated to trust the edited writings in their corrupted form, they are naturally moved to hate us for presenting truth they believe to be a lie. And no, not all SDAs are like this, but the numbers of those that hate the truth are in fact growing. As I alluded to in the video titled, SDA Pastors Caught Lying, the Seventh-day Adventist leaders in unison with those that started this work many decades ago under the prophesied guidance of Rome have changed the original writings of Ellen White. In fact, with the exception of a few of her original titles, most of the books offered by the Seventh-day Adventist Church today were never written by Ellen White at all. Yes, that means they lied when they claimed she approved of the books being offered, and they lied when they stated she was the author of those books. As expected, every Seventh-day Adventist church today offers only the edited writings when selling these books to their church members, as well as those they distribute to the lost souls around the world. Need I remind you of the great counterfeit called the Great Hope that the Seventh-day Adventist president Ted Wilson sent out that purposely hid the facts about the popes of Rome and their long prophesied plans of attack on those that claim Christ Lord in the coming days? That book was a counterfeit of the original Great Controversy. Well, that all being said, what of the remnant of the seed that prophecy says will only follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes? What books would we recommend when moved to share with those in need? Well, the original ones, of course. But notice this. In the Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 1, page 11, it says, The testimony of Jesus, said the angel to John, is the Spirit of Prophecy. It is the keeping of the commandments of God and the recognition of the revival of the spirit of prophecy by the remnant of the church, or the Christians of the last generation, that stirs the ire of the dragon. As we see here, the remnant people that leave the Seventh-day Adventist church will be used of God to share the unchanged books, as God intended. Now, I don't think it's necessary to show all the changes the SDA leaders made in the spirit of prophecy, as that would take days on end to do. But I am currently awaiting the arrival of the book Vern Bates made, where he outlined the changes made in the 1884 Great Controversy, and I'm sure more videos will be the end result. Suffice it to say, all one needs to do is buy the original books from vbates.com and compare them with what they got from the Seventh-day Adventist Church the last 100 years or so. In any event, if you look into this, you will discover, just as the Vatican altered the Bibles to hide the truth about the popes and their dying god Satan, the SDA leaders are doing the exact same thing with the writings of Ellen White to hide how Rome has taken the SDA church so as to ready a people to worship Antichrist instead of the true Christ. Notice what the White estate admits to in writing. In 1992, the review revealed the practice of the staff of the White Estate in revising and altering the writings of Ellen White. Paul A. Gordon, the secretary of the White Estate, writes, Is it legitimate to change, abridge, or simplify Ellen White's writings? The answer is yes. We can change, abridge, or simplify the words. But we do not have license to change the intended message. Here's why Seventh-day Adventists do not hold to verbal inspiration. That means we do not believe that God dictated the words for Ellen White to use. 
In the years since Mrs. White's death in 1915, more than 50 new compilations or editions of Ellen White's books have been prepared by the E.G. White estate. In every case, including editions that have been abridged, condensed, or simplified, the intended message has never been lost. Only the wording has been changed. But they did not actually just simplify the words as they claim. This next example will prove otherwise. Notice the highlighted area, especially. It says this, in the original book, A Word to the Little Flock, on page 15. It says, on this path, the Advent people were traveling to the city. Others rashly denied the light behind them and said that it was not God that had led them out so far. The light behind them went out, leaving their feet in perfect darkness. And they stumbled and got their eyes off the mark and lost sight of Jesus and fell off the path down in the dark and wicked world below. It was just as impossible for them to get on the path again and go to the city as all the wicked world which God had rejected. They fell all the way along the path, one after another, until we heard the voice of God like many waters, which gave us the day and hour of Jesus' coming. But notice what the Seventh-day Adventist Church has published. They said others rashly denied the light behind them and said that it was not God that had led them out so far. The light behind them went out, leaving their feet in perfect darkness, and they stumbled in the lost sight of the mark and of Jesus and fell off the path down into the dark and wicked world below. And then they completely deleted the entire highlighted area that I just read a moment ago and say, soon we heard the voice of God like many waters which gave us the day and the hour of Jesus' coming. And so no mention at all as to the final and unforgivable position of those that left the path because leaving those words in from the original book would mean their Vatican echo of staying with the church to be saved all the way to the end could not be used now. The people are taught they can stay in the church and still be blessed, even though Jesus said the remnant will come out. If that statement was left in, the honest SDA brethren would eventually seek to repent and better prepare for the coming of the Lord. In so doing, their study of the word and the spirit of prophecy would bring them to realize they need to leave the church. They will find their leaders lied when they said to stay with the ship, but their Christian duty is to follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. But the SDA church rejected the 1888 message that declared it is Christ our righteousness, and so Jesus is no longer in the Seventh-day Adventist church. So staying in makes no sense. And for those that ignore their Bibles on this, there are 336 statements from Ellen White endorsing the 1888 message so as to help the people of God learn the truth as to why the Seventh-day Adventist leaders rejected it. As the 501c3 government contract with the Second Beast of Revelation confirms, the Seventh-day Adventist leaders are more concerned with the cash they can make than the precious souls under their care, and so they will most assuredly lie to keep them in the pews. And so to keep this video short, notice this final point. If you have the published writings of Ellen G. White on DVD, search for the book, A Word to the Little Flock, just query in WLF. Notice that after scrolling through some comments from the trustees of the Ellen White estate, we see that little booklet actually starts on page 12. They didn't even hide their deleted pages by renumbering the book. Now check the original copy of that very same book. I actually have it online on my site. Notice what's covered on those missing 12 pages. That's right. It's all about what will happen very soon regarding the time of trouble, which has actually already started in our day, and then the plagues and the final time of Jacob's trouble. The Jesuits in the SDA church and those in bed with them in the general conference that are controlling the SDA church do not want you to be ready for the return of Christ. No getting around the fact that they purposely removed those 12 pages that literally speak of that time when you have to prepare. And so you need to get a copy of this book from vbates.com and read those 12 pages to be better prepared for what's already begun. And so it is the prayer of the Seventh-day Remnant people all over the world that when you read the original books, that you will come to realize that just as Scripture and the Spirit of Prophecy declared long ago, the remnant people of God are those that come out of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, not those that stay in. Thank you for watching. God bless.